Hey folks, hope you're all doing very well. It's been a long time since I posted a video, sorry about that. Um, today I want to talk about how to write packages on real life projects. That's something that sometimes we are required to do. On this example, I'm going to use a project that exists, um, that is live. And we needed to develop an SDK for the payment gateway we are using. It's called Zoop. So if I go here and show you guys the code, so here is the project and we needed to develop this SDK, they don't have one. And my plan was to just develop something for internal use. But I think I'm going to release it as a package and I want to show you guys the approach that I think is the best on how to develop packages inside projects that you can release later without changing basically anything. So my first approach to this kind of thing is to create a folder. So I create this, this zip folder and just tell Composer to load the files from there. This is PS, PSR4 auto loading. Um, you were familiar with this one. We are telling Composer that anything inside the app folder uses this namespace uh, root. And I added this one saying that anything inside the Zoop folder uses this namespace root. So if I go to Zoop, I have the namespace. And if I want to, to instantiate this, I have the facade as well, which is in this folder. And if I go to config app, um, you can see that I am loading it right here. And I'm loading the facade as well. So if we go here, let me run Tinker and we say um, zip sellers. I get an instance of seller. Um, this is really good for developing stuff. Uh, it's inside your project. And if it's for internal use only, that also works great. Um, this is not something that limits, uh, that is limited to packages. You can do it for anything that kind of scopes out of your application. But this is not really good when you want to release it as a package later. Reason being is, the first reason is that the namespace only has, um, I, I don't know how to call this, but uh, it's a single namespace, like, uh, what's the word for this? Jesus, that's, you only have one level namespace. So when you, when you have packages, you usually have the vendor name and the package name. So in my case, it would look something like uh, the root namespace would look something like this, Mateo Jateni, zip. That's the first issue. Sure, you can get around this, but really, it's weird. But you could say your project and then the package namespace. And the other issue is that once you want to release this as a package, you are going to have to create a composer JSON file, publish all of that. So I think it's best to just do this all at once. And I'm going to show you guys how to do this. So just going back on how to do it this way, you just need to tell Composer to auto load a folder here, and then you gotta run Composer, oops, dump auto loader, which we can use a shortened version called GU. If you want to know more about this, I have a video about modularizing Laravel. I'm going to leave the link on the description and I can I, I talk a little bit more in depth about this. But let's talk about developing it as a package. So I'm going to switch branches. Okay, I've switched branches. And if we go to Zoop, you can see that things are a little bit different. We have the source folder and we have a composer file. And we basically have a different composer project inside this folder. So we are telling, hey, load this source folder as Mateo Zoop. We have a license. We say that we require the HTTP package from Laravel. We have the authors, all of that. And then we have everything inside the source folder. And if we go here, the names, namespace changed as well. And okay, but how can we use this in our project if we cannot import it, we cannot require it because it is not live on packages. Well, it's real simple. Composer has something called local repositories. So if you go to the Composer JSON file, I've already used it for Nova, 
but you can specify a path and let Composer know that it is a Composer project. So I just said, hey Composer, um, on the path soup we have a Composer project, I want you to treat it as a repository. And then I can just require it as usual. Where is it? Here. And pass this, I forgot what this is called, this little star. If someone remembers the name of this, please leave it on the comments. And Composer will treat it as a package. It does not have a minimum stability, it does not have a version, but it works as a package. And first, let's run Composer Jump Auto Loader. And if we go to config app, you guys are going to see that I needed to make a few changes because we changed the root namespace. So I've changed it here and I've changed the facade as well. So if we go and say zip sellers, I get an instance as a shoot. Now, this works really well. It means that once the package is ready to be uh, used by other people, in this case it is not, you can just drop this uh, into another folder, uh, another project, whatever you want, and publish to GitHub. Now, you can go a step further and leave this on another directory. So, for instance, we are on the sites directory. What I could do is create another uh, project for only for Zoop. So we could go and say um, Zoop, something like this. Put everything inside this folder so it's completely detached from the main project. Then I could start a git repository here and on the composer JSON file of the project itself, I could specify it to be one directory behind. So it would actually look for this uh, folder. And that's really good because you are completely detached from the main project. In my case, as I had started it as a, not as a package, just as part of the project, I decided to keep as this. And once this is ready to be released, I'm just going to create a new project, put all of the stuff there, and just require it normally, pulling it from packages. But if you already have plans to release it as a package, doing it like this is great. So um, you have your main folder, and then you have your project, and then you have your package. And you can tell Composer to use this package which is on the same level as the project as a composer repository. And this is great because here you have uh, git repo one and git repo two. So they are completely detached. Once you can just make this uh, a private repository and you can tell your team to pull both of them and it's going to work just fine. And once the package is ready to be released, you can just make this repository public. You're going to still have all of the commits all of the iterations and everything's going to be decoupled already. And once it's done, if you want, you can just change your project to use the version available on packages. Or if you want to use the most up-to-date version, the development version or whatever you want to call it, you can keep it as it is. But of course, if you use it as a path repository, as we are specifying here, once your app is deployed to production, you are going to have to pull the package as well. You're always going to have to keep those two up to date. So my recommendation is do it like this. And once you have the package ready to be released or once it already has all of the functionalities you need, you just publish it as a regular packages um, project and just pull it, just pull it in like always. For instance, I have this one called Laravel Wavy and I'm using the dev master version, but um, I shouldn't. But it is it is published in packages. I just uh, pull it as I normally do with any package and it works fine. Um, as it already has all the features I need, I don't, it's not in active development. Let's call it like this. Um, I can just uh, change it separately and pull it in normally on packages. In this case, I still have to attest, I still have to add documentation, add doc blocks, change a few things. Once that's done, I'm going to move this 
to another project, publish it on GitHub, and publish it on packages. That's my goal. But for now, we need to use the features that we have here. And that's why it is still inside this project. Um, I hope this made sense for you guys. I'm not sure if it was confusing. If it didn't, you can leave comments uh, and all that. And as always, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you want to support me and see more videos like this one. Thank you guys so much for watching and see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.